Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Suraj, and I'm from uh, TRU World. Uh, we will get started in another 10 minutes. We're just going to allow some time for everybody to join this session. Um, let's make sure your sound is working fine. I hope you can hear this message clearly. Um, once we get started, we will address all the points um, that we mentioned in the email as well as the invitation. Um, yeah, stay tuned, and uh, we will uh, get started uh, fairly soon. Thank you. Welcome to Thompson Rivers University. Hi, I'm Caitlin. And I'm Tim. And we're really excited to show you around campus and share with you all that TRU has to offer. You'll get an inside look at what it means to be a student at TRU. What an awesome experience that is. You can learn, study, grow, eat, live, and relax here at Thompson Rivers University. Thompson Rivers University is located in Kamloops, in the interior of British Columbia, on the traditional lands of the Chequetmic people. It began in 1970 as Caribou College. As the institution grew and offered degree programs, it became the University College of the Caribou. It has since evolved to a full-on university as of 2005. Now, over 14,000 students study on campus. And another 12,000 study by distance or online. TRU provides a diverse and dynamic environment in which you can grow and learn. The campus is beautiful and easy to navigate and has superb academic opportunities. And the small class sizes provide students with an intimate sense of community. So what can you study here? With 140 on-campus programs and about 60 open learning programs, you can choose how you want to learn and what works best for you. From certificates and apprenticeships to bachelor's and master's degrees. Now the amazing thing about TRU is that it offers flexible learning options to suit your lifestyle. You can study on campus with in-person instruction and TRU's intimate learning environment and hands-on approach allows for easily made connections. But the greatest thing about class, your awesome faculty. TRU attracts fantastic instructors from around the globe. Not only are they experts in their field, but they take the time to guide and mentor you to succeed. In our small classes, your instructor gets to know your name. And their doors are always open if you need help. <laughs> or you can study online at your own pace through open learning. Manage your busy school, work, and social commitments. And get ahead in your studies while you work. If you have a part-time job, travel frequently with a sports team, or are completing a co-op work term, your studies can go where you go. Find additional academic support in places like the Writing Center, the Economics Help Center, and the Math Help Center. Take advantage of free tutoring to help achieve the stellar grades you're looking for. Our two libraries are yours to discover with books, articles, videos, and other resources for your classes. We also have plenty of study spaces on campus, whether it's for a group study session or for yourself between classes. Looking for something bright and airy, fresh and breezy, or straight up cubicle style? Or looking for an all night study space? TRU got you covered. TRU offers unique opportunities for experiential learning. These are chances to enhance and apply what you learn inside the classroom with meaningful student engagement outside the classroom. So step your game up. You can't be slacking. 
Cooperative Education, or Co-op as we call it, blends paid for credit, career-related work experience before graduation. Now that's a win-win situation. And with 200 study abroad choices in over 40 countries, there are so many options for learning and living in another culture. Field schools are another great way to see the world, studying for just a few weeks in places such as Belize, Ecuador, and Eastern Slovakia. And they're offered each year by select courses. And try research. From hibernating bats to sustainable urban design, the possibilities are endless when a topic sparks your curiosity. There are many ways to get involved in undergraduate research here at TRU, plus opportunities to work one-on-one -on -one with faculty researchers. Research is a fantastic way to ask questions, push boundaries, and develop strategies and solutions that make a difference in the real world. TRU's campus community is inclusive, diverse, vibrant, and multicultural with over 85 countries represented in our student body. We also have the largest Aboriginal student population amongst post-secondary colleges, institutes, and university in British Columbia. TRU embraces and celebrates diversity at events like I-Days, Aboriginal Awareness Week, the Pride Parade, Chinese New Year, and Rang De Vasanti. Because your well-being is key to achieving your goals, True offers various services to support your physical and mental health. The wellness team shares information on nutrition, sleep, sexual health, and more. Plus, they host much-loved activities to de-stress like mindfulness meditations and therapy dog Thursdays. TRU Recreation promotes fun, active health, and offers free yoga and fitness classes. And in the mirrors. And you can get your sweat on at the World Class Tournament Capital Center, located right beside campus. CFL teams train here, Olympians train here, and NBA athletes train here. TRU is home to the Wolfpack. We have 11 athletic teams, eight of which compete at the top varsity level. So get pumped, because T-Spirit is infectious. Other supports to help you on your learning journey include a medical clinic, academic advising, counseling, career education, and student awards and financial support. You'll find many of these services on Student Street in the old main building in the heart of campus. I guess what we're saying is, if you ever need assistance or have a question, just ask. True has close to 100 student clubs on campus. It is a great way to connect with people who have common interests. Aboriginal drum circle, eco, chess, longboarding, and actus, the list goes on. Thompson Rivers University Student Union not only advocates for students, but also hosts major events and activities, such as the Back to School Barbecue, the Common Voices Lecture Series, and Movie Nights. Catch a performance by TRU Actors Workshop Theater, written a black box theater on campus. Or you can volunteer, host your own show at CFBX or Campus Community Radio Station. Let's face it, there's more to the university than books and classes. So get involved. It's the best way to experience TRU and meet new and interesting friends. Grab a bite at one of our many hot spots. The quality food options and places to hang out and connect with friends. From your early morning coffee and croissant to your gourmet lunch to your post-seminar sweet treat, TRU's dining options can feed your needs and snack to avoid hanger. Mm. Mm. Common Grounds is the only student-owned and operated coffee shop on campus. Located in True Sioux Independence Center's two-story lounge, it's a great place to meet your friends for a study break or a sandwich. They got good banana bread, too. Heroes Pub is located on the second floor of the campus activity center. It's also where you can satisfy your hankering for a killer poutine. Scratch Cafe in the Culinary Arts Training Center is perhaps the best kept secret on campus. Not anymore. Here you'll find daily soups, a creative salad bar, and a changing menu of entrees, all made from scratch by our culinary arts students. You can grab a cup of coffee in nearly every building on campus, and we also have a full service Starbucks and Tim Hortons. Thanks, Tim. A prepaid dining card can come in handy. Plus, it's accepted in most places on campus. There are also many other food options within walking distance to campus, including three major grocery stores and a variety of restaurants that offer all types of cuisine. Whether you live on campus or off campus, housing plays a big part in your university experience. On campus housing, we call the Gill, has 300 private rooms, each with a kitchenette, in a quad with shared washroom, and is across the street from the TCC. 
The TRU Residence and Conference Center, also known as the RES, is an 11-story building located on the north side of campus. It has 574 rooms with two or four bedroom suites and features some of the best views of the city. And rooms are guaranteed to first year students. <laughs> <laughs> Both residents have laundry access, free Wi-Fi, and host special resident events. They also have fabulous staff who want to support you in your home away from home. There are convenient, safe, and affordable neighborhoods to live in within walking distance if you prefer to live off campus. Welcome to BC's friendliest city and Canada's tournament capital. It's not too big and not too small with about 85,000 residents. Kamloops is a giant playground with over 2,000 hours of sunshine per year, four awesome seasons, and numerous active recreational activities. You can see and experience the desert, mountains, grasslands, river valley, and beach all in one day. 250 biking routes, fabulous hiking within city limits, and trails just off campus. Satisfy your taste buds. Grab a latte at one of our many rad coffee shops. Hit up a half and brunch locale or try one of our famous food trucks. We also have local wineries and breweries too. Experience the arts with live music, our Western Canada Theatre, and our dope art galleries. Free admission to the Canada's Art Gallery on Thursdays. What are your interests? What do you like to do? What do you want to try out? Explore your neighborhood and community because Kamloops has what you're looking for. Being a TRU student means flexible learning that fits your life, no matter where you begin your educational journey. TRU's alumni are prepared for success. You'll be set to get back to your community with all that you've learned here. So there you have it, Thompson Rivers University. Are you convinced yet? Check us out. If you can get a Kiwi sweatshirt? I hope so. All right. All right, hello everybody. Uh, I hope you can all hear me clearly and see me clearly as well. Um, my name is Suraj. Uh, I am uh, the marketing one of the marketing managers at TRU World and uh, uh, one of the student recruitment uh, officers as well. Um, I welcome you all to this session. I know we've been uh, waiting for the session for a long time now and uh, uh, wanting to get all of our queries cleared out and all our doubts cleared out. So this is going to be a great opportunity to do that. Um, so today's session is going to be in a few different parts, and I have a few different people joining me to address all these uh, different things today. So um, what I would like to do is invite you, first of all, to start posting your questions in the chat window that you see. Um, and like I know there's a lot of messaging going on uh, over there right now, but uh, if you clearly uh, put your question there, we will be able to uh, add those to our Q&A list that we will be addressing uh, later in this session. Um, we will end the session with Q&A, so uh, that's when we will answer all your questions. Uh, until then, we do have a few different things in order for you. Um, please bear with us because we are uh, live streaming this from our homes. Uh, we don't have the tech setup that we usually do, so I hope uh, this goes smoothly and uh, we are able to address all your queries. Um, so let's get started here. And uh, what we will start with is an, um, our CEO uh, for international, as well as our associate vice president, Baiwa Chadwick. Uh, she will be addressing you with um, some notes. So I will uh, now invite Baiwa to uh, come on and uh, come online and share her thoughts with you. Thank you. Dear students, parents, and recruitment partners, my name is Bai Hua Chadwick, and I'm the Associate Vice President International and Chief Executive Officer Global Operations. First of all, I want you to know that I've been thinking about you during the past few weeks. I understand you've been under tremendous stress during these challenging times, and I hope that you and your loved ones are well. 
the continued spread of COVID-19 in Canada and around the world has understandably raised concerns for you and your families. Rest assured that at Thompson Rivers University, the well-being of our students, faculty and staff is of the deepest concern to us. Your safety will remain our top priority as the situation continues to evolve. TRU's response to COVID-19 is guided by Canada's public health authorities' advisories and guidelines, and we're taking important steps to help our community to stay protected. As of March 23rd, TRU moved away from face-to-face -face classroom instructions and transitioned to alternative methods of delivery. The university is open. Services such as admissions, student support, finance, libraries, and student housing continue to be available to our students. Our staff has been working from home to serve our students via online connections. For the most updated information, I invite you to visit our website, www.tru.ca slash COVID-19. I also want to thank you for choosing Thompson Rivers University as your study institution. Your rich and insightful Canadian university experiences, academic and career successes are all supported by the faculty and staff here at Thompson Rivers University. In an unprecedented time like this, our university is prepared to continue to deliver quality education through various education platforms. And we will walk along together with you during your journey in Canada. Thank you again for your patience, understanding, and your empathy to each other. Best wishes and stay safe. I look forward to seeing you on campus. Thank you very much, Baiwa. Um, so just to, uh, so everybody remembers that is Ms. Baiwa Chadwick and she is our Associate Vice President at Thompson Rivers University. Uh, and she looks after uh, the division that looks after international students. Um, next up, I am going to quickly uh, do some introductions here so that you are aware of who's who. Um, so uh, today's session, uh, you will uh, get an opportunity to interact with two of my colleagues, uh, Mr. Zipping Feng, as well as Mr. Ruben Onyango. Uh, you will also hear a presentation from uh, Rayanne Rickett, who is my co-manager in the same department, and she will be uh, providing you with an update on all the different things that have been um, impacted due to the COVID-19 situation, um, as well as some uh, updates around finances, around admissions, applications. I see there's lots of questions here. We will address them and we will make sure that we answer all of them. Um, so the next few uh, bits, we will actually, uh, I will invite Rayan to make a presentation on all the updates. Uh, I want you all to uh, maybe take a quick break from uh, posting and chatting and focus on this presentation because this is extremely important and get all the information out of this. And then after that, we will welcome all your questions. I bet a lot of your questions will actually get answered during this session. So just give me a second while I get the, get the presentation rolling and invite Rayanne to uh, make this presentation. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Rayanne and I am one of TRU's International Recruitment Managers. I'm here on behalf of the International Marketing and Recruitment Team to share some updates with you on TRU's fall semester in relation to the COVID-19 situation. So in response to COVID-19, as of last week, current TRU students are now connecting with their instructors virtually. What this looks like is different depending on the class or instructor. Some instructors are emailing students with course content or posting slides or lecture notes online. Others are uploading video content and are using online learning platforms. These alternate delivery methods are expected to continue into the summer semester as we try to limit the spread of COVID-19 using social distancing. If you are a future TRU student and had planned to start your studies in the summer, your application has been automatically deferred to fall. We want you to have a positive and successful experience at TRU. If you're already in Canada, please contact us for options. 
With no students on campus, our services have also moved off campus and into virtual methods of delivery. With the exception of essential services like janitorial and security, um, most of our staff are now working remotely. The transition for most staff is complete and we are available to provide assistance by phone, email and online. You can now schedule meetings by phone or online with your international student advisors and academic or program advisors. You can contact our international admissions department by email. Please check the individual department web pages or call ahead to find out how the service is offered. We will regularly update the status of our services through our COVID-19 campus services page and we will share that link with you after the presentation. We do ask that you be patient as we adjust to this new way of working. So our international admissions team and enrollment officers are now set up to work from home. However, the transition for them has taken some time and staff are still adjusting. So you may have been experiencing some delays with your applications, but the team is now settled and they are working hard to catch up. So hopefully you will hear from them soon if you haven't already. We do appreciate your understanding and ask that you have patience with them. They're working on your requests and processing new applications for the fall semester as quickly as they can. Um, if you're worried about your English proficiency testing, excuse me, um, if you've lived and studied in an English-speaking country, you are not required to submit an IELTS or a TOEFL, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, and our admissions team may process applications and issue conditional offers to applicants for open admission programs, so that's our business, arts, science, and some tourism programs, without an IELTS or TOEFL. In some cases, they may ask you to submit proof of English prior to receiving a conditional offer, but in this case, we are being flexible with that for most programs. If you are able to submit your test scores before August 1st, we do strongly encourage you to do so, um, as it will help with, with registration. If you're not able to submit your test scores prior to arrival, you will be required to take TRU's English placement test. And based on the results, you may need to take additional ESL courses at Tier U. Um, just so you know, this will require additional fees and time for your studies. So if you are at all able to take an English, score be English test before you arrive, we do recommend that. If you're applying for, um, for admission from a country with SDS visa processing, the IRCC requires you to provide proof of English. Um, at this time, we're not aware of any changes to this requirement given the COVID situation, so we do recommend that you check with them on their requirements. Um, for official transcript submissions, we do understand that the current situation has presented challenges related to accessing your final and official transcripts in many countries. If you have access to your transcripts, please send them along now with your payment. Upon receipt of both, we can issue your final letter of admission. If, because of the pandemic, you are unable to access your official transcripts, please notify our admissions team that your transcripts are unavailable. Upon receipt of payment, they can then issue your final acceptance letter and they will mention in the letter that TRU will allow official transcripts to be submitted by August the 1st. Please note that official transcripts must be in order, or sorry, must be submitted uh, before you can register for courses. So they must be submitted um, at least with your arrival, if not before. Um, if you need to get in touch with admissions, please direct any application-related communication to iapply at tru.ca. And remember, with all communication, please include your TRU ID number or if you haven't received that yet, you can include your application reference number and your date of birth. Payments can now be made via paymytuition.com. We encourage you to submit your payment now to ensure that you can apply for and receive your study permit prior to August 1st. If you are not able to meet the payment deadline outlined in your conditional offer letter, or if the deadline has already passed, please contact us for an extension. And again, that would be to iapply at tru.ca. In the case of extensions, we will look to see if visa processing times in your country allow for a late payment deadline. So please take that into consideration when you're arranging to make your payments.
If you simply are not able to make your payment in time to apply for and receive your study permit by August 1st, you will be able to request a deferral to the next semester at no additional charge. So as I'm sure you're aware, Canada's borders are currently closed to non-residents. Um, there have been exemptions made for international students who received their study permit and were issued a letter of invitation before March the 18th. Anyone who received their study permit after March 18th will not be able to enter Canada at this time. Any travelers at all, even those mentioned above, who show sh symptoms of COVID-19 will not be allowed to board their flight to Canada. All travelers, whether or not they have symptoms, are required to self-isolate for 14 days immediately upon arrival in Canada. This is a mandatory um, order from the government. Currently, new applicants are strongly encouraged to apply for visas online. Due to service disruptions related to COVID-19, the IRCC is experiencing difficulties receiving and processing applications submitted by mail or in person at visa application centers. Processing delays are expected and we highly recommend that you start your application early whenever possible. So we are all in an evolving situation and we expect that things may change. If or when they do, we will keep you updated, so please watch your inbox and take action when needed. If you haven't received any communication from us since you applied, please make sure that we have your correct personal email address. If you received the invitation for this uh, session to your email address, then you can assume we do have the correct email address. If not, please contact us. And if you have any doubts, please don't hesitate to contact us as well. We are all working hard as usual. Um, you are also welcome to schedule a meeting with TRU staff and we'll share a link uh, for you to set this up with the appropriate departments after the presentation. We know this is a stressful time and one that none of us have experienced before, thankfully, and hopefully not again. You may be wondering if it's the right time to plan your studies abroad, but don't let this temporary disruption stop you from achieving your dreams of studying in Canada. Please know that TRU is working to help you to have a safe and healthy environment to continue your studies. It will be an amazing and life-changing experience when you get here. Canada's government is strong and actively working to keep our population healthy and our economy strong. Canada and TRU have committed to social distancing measures to limit the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Canada's government has also put programs in place to support citizens and international students who are working on post-graduation work permits, residing in Canada, and they are constantly improving our immigration program. They're currently also considering options to support current international students who are working on study permits who have been impacted by the pandemic. We are all in this together and doing our part and looking forward to a new positive reality in the fall of 2020. That's all I have to share for updates with you, but we do have a few commonly asked questions that I'll go through with you before we take your questions live. So the first question, I have applied for fall 2020 semester. When can I expect my offer letter? So as I mentioned, we've spent the last week or two preparing for and moving to work from home mode. So our application processing time is delayed. For master's programs, you can expect six weeks processing time from the time that you submitted your completed applications. For all other programs, it may take up to four weeks. If you submitted your completed application more than four to six weeks ago, please contact our admissions team by email at iapply at tru.ca or for master's programs, you can contact them at igrad at tru.ca. Our admissions team may also con contact you directly um, to request additional documents if they're missing from your application. For selective programs such as software engineering and practical nursing, uh, the application process may take longer due to the competitive nature of the programs. Decisions for these programs are made by selection committees after all of the applications have been received, so they typically do take a bit longer. So the next question is, I have received my admission offer. It asks for both official transcripts to be mailed and tuition deposit to be paid. What should I do next? 
So if you've received your offer letter, you should follow the next steps as much as possible. If you're able to submit your payment and the required documents now, then you should do so now. Payment is required in order for our admissions team to issue a final letter of acceptance, but to accommodate the challenges that you're facing due to the pandemic, we will allow late payments for the fall semester. Um, and that includes um, for students whose payment deadline has already passed. Please remember to plan enough time for visa processing so that you can arrive on time for the new semester. The transcript application deadline has also been extended to August the 1st. In most cases, not all cases, but most, the admissions team will issue the final letter for, for your study permit application. Again, if you have access to your documents now, please do send them now. The next question, I cannot get my IELTS test done in the near future. Should I pause my admission process? Um, for competitive programs, including master's degrees, there are limited seats and proof of English is required prior to admission. So in this case, yes, your admission process may be delayed. Um, for all other programs, our admission team will be able to issue an offer prior to receiving your test scores. And even though we can issue conditional offers, proof of English is still required. Um, so to provide this, and that's sorry, and that's provide required prior to registering for classes. So to provide this, you have two options. You can either submit your scores late after receiving your offer letter, but preferably before August the 1st, or you can take TRU's English placement test upon arrival to TRU. Based on your results, you may be placed directly into academic classes, or you may be required to take additional ESL classes. Next question, will my visa get processed smoothly during the COVID-19 period? Uh, the current situation with COVID-19 has caused many disruptions to services, including visa processing. You should watch for notices from your local visa processing center and be prepared for a longer processing time. Hopefully you will not need it, but definitely good to be prepared. We have been receiving visa approval updates from students daily, um, and we know that visa officers are working hard to support you, so just, just keep at it. Um, if the visa center for your country is closed, please be patient and just work on getting prepared so that when the visa center reopens, you do not have additional delays. When will the travel restrictions to Canada be lifted? Good question. We hope soon. Please follow the Canadian government announcements for the latest information. They will be the ones to announce uh, that ban being lifted. We will post more information on travel information when it's available, but if you want to go ahead and book your travel now, it might be a good idea to book a flexible fare in case changes are required down the road. Um, last question. So will the fall 2020 semester still proceed as planned? At this moment, we are planning for the fall 2020 semester to proceed as scheduled, and we will definitely keep you posted if anything changes. Um, again, if you did not receive this, the email invitation for this session directly to your um, most updated email address, please send us your email address along with your TRU IED number to welcome at tru.ca and we'll make sure that your record is updated. You can also follow us on Instagram or for updates or subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay in touch. Um, um, I, will now I will now turn it over to my colleagues to take more of your questions. And thanks again for your, and time, again and for your time, and please take care. Thank you, Rianne, uh, for this presentation. It was, in fact, um, very, uh, uh, very uh, explanatory. I hope this answered many of your questions, guys. Um, just a couple of notes. We've been noticing on the chat window there's a lot of unnecessary chat going on. I know YouTube is meant for that, but please uh, focus on the presentation, focus on the content. Uh, this video will be available for later view. Uh, we will share the link after. It's gonna be the same link. It's going to be available on that. But I, I do suggest you focus on the actual conversation because uh, I, I know there's a parallel chat going on. There's some, um, there's some comments coming in that are not necessarily even um, uh, PG-18, so we're gonna definitely block those. Uh, we have a team who's actually making sure that we're filtering all your comments. So please be careful uh, and don't post uh, just anything that comes to your mind. Uh, post your questions because we are going to be taking your questions shortly. Um, but again, before that, I do have one more um, 
quick slide to share with you guys. And this is something that I want you to do after this video session. Uh, make sure to follow us on social media. So you can see our social media channels down there in the right bottom. So we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, Instagram and Facebook is where we post a lot of our content uh, in terms of all the updates around um, you know, what's happening on campus, as well as if there's anything uh, new, any important announcements. Uh, so please make sure to follow us on Instagram at TRE World, or you can also go to facebook.com slash TRE World. Um, so this session here will also be available uh, later on YouTube on youtube.com slash TRE World. So that's pretty much it for the social media update. Make sure to follow us. But after this session right now, we still need you to focus here. Um, what we're going to go on to now is our Q&A session. So for the Q&A session, I would like to invite uh, the Director of International Marketing and Recruitment, uh, Zipping Feng, as well as the Manager for International Student Accommodation, Events, and Student Services, uh, Ruben Onyango. Um, so Zipping and Ruben, if you don't mind, uh, this is the time for you guys to join our session and we can address all the questions uh, that we're getting from our students. Um, I do have all the questions coming in here. So we're just going to wait a couple seconds for Zipping and Ruben to join. Okay, just a quick note uh, on Zipping and Ruben. Uh, make sure to close all other uh, windows. Um, if you have the, the video streaming on the other end, please uh, make sure to close those um, so that it's clear and uh, audible. Um, I'm now going to start uh, asking the questions. Uh, sorry, we're just going to wait another second. I don't see the thing's video on. Just a couple more minutes here, guys. Uh, yeah, but please feel free to start posting your questions. Uh, we will answer them uh, one at a time in the order of receiving the questions. Okay, so I see Ruben and Zipping are both in. Um, can we do a quick mic test? Are you guys? Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Excellent, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna start asking the questions here. Our first question from one of our viewers is, I am joining the fall 2020 semester. What will be the right time for me to apply for visa? and study permit, and what do, how do I go about with this process? It's a very good question, thank you. So every country has different processing times, um, so it's advisable that you can check that information on the IRCC website if you go to canada.ca. Uh, however, we suggest that as soon as you have your final letter of acceptance and you can get your supporting documents, uh, you get the process started. Uh, the earlier, the better, because processing times do change. I think I answered, I answered both in one. <laughs> you did. You did. Yeah. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, our next question is, uh, so the summer intake has now been deferred to September. Uh, does TRU have plans to defer the September intake to winter? That's a very good question. So Zipping, I think uh, this is for you. Uh, does TRU have plans to defer the September intake to January session? Good question and a very valid concern. Uh, my name is Ziping Feng. I do hear that we have a big crowd joining this live session today. And uh, we're so excited to have this opportunity to have a conversation with you. I want to say hi, particularly to a special group called TRU Troopers. And I know uh, you know that who you are. And if you hear this, please comment cheers uh, through our comment um, window, please. So to answer your question, um, this is an unprecedented um, uh, pandemic. It never happened before. And no organization had a perfect plan for this. Uh, so the uh, the country, the nation, the globe are, are exercising, um, exercising their due diligence to prevent this uh, virus spread further. So um, at this moment, um, the as Rhea mentioned during her presentation, our fall semester is still scheduled to be on. Uh, we are monitoring the situation very closely and we're exercising a physical distance. And I would recommend you do the same to keep your community safe. And we'll be watching this uh, situation and we'll keep you updated with any information that come into changes. We'll let you know the first um, firsthand. And at this moment, the fall semester is on. Awesome, thank you, Zipping. 
Um, our next question is, considering the situation right now, should I pay the accommodation fees or should I wait? Um, and would I get a refund in case things are not back to normal by September? It's a very good question. So as of this point, we are working on the assumption that the fall semester is going to be a go. Um, and until that changes, we carry on with everything as usual. So uh, we would recommend that you get your accommodation sorted out as well. The residence has moved away from a model where they charged a security deposit and accommodation fees. Now there is a one-time non-refundable application fee of $100. And then once you're accepted, you get to pay the rest of the residence fees. So for right now, submit the applications. If there are any changes at all, they will be communicated with you. Thank you. Thanks, Ruben. Um, our next question here is, will the fall semester be delivered in alternate methods, which is non-face-to-face? -face? Um, and if so, do we need to be in Canada for that? Or can I take that from my home country? Very good question. Um, at this moment, there is no uh, detailed um, plans for the delivery mode for fall courses. But the university has been ex um, exercising all different level of uh, delivery platforms we can use. The good thing is the modern technology would allow the university to deliver courses through online, through a very interactive delivery model, or through face-to-face, -face, or combined um, um, methods of deliveries. So at this moment, I wanted uh, to suggest all the students stay tuned and watch for future communications. We will give you the best uh, advice on whether you should be planning travel or should stay at home and uh, taking the courses through an alternative delivery model. Thank you, Zipeng. Our next question here is, I am a high school student and I was scheduled to graduate and start at TRU this summer, but my high school exams have been canceled. What should I do? Um, that's a very valid question. We do recognize that currently there are many educational institutions, including high schools, including colleges and universities. They couldn't finish the regular course delivery, therefore also affected uh, the final exam. And um, so in this situation, please submit and communicate with our admission team and provide anything that you have that is up to date and if you also have a related announcement or notices saying that there won't be final exams associated to a particular class, those notes will be really helpful for admission team officers to determine uh, what, how do we evaluate your application. At this moment, submit, uh, I suggest you submit whatever you have, but not overly concerned about you don't have the final grades because you're not the only one and our uh, team uh, admission team will be ready to assess those based on what is being provided. But what I wanted to suggest to you is, even the semester not ended, please still stay focused on whatever uh, course delivery mode that is delivered to you and complete your courses and semester successfully so you're better prepared for the university study. Excellent point, thank you, Zipping. Um, our next question here is, I know a lot of people uh, have been struggling with financials. Is TRU offering any discounts or um, on fees or any payment plans or anything that can help them with financial aid? Um, again, a very good question. And we want to remind us students studying abroad is um, in many senses, a big investment, and you are investment for your education, for your future, for your career as well. And uh, I'm really happy to see that many students could take local financial support through bank loans, through family and um, um, relative support. We do want it to you to build a robust uh, plan to support your study. Um, in the case of this financial changes with your um, financial uh, affordability, we suggest you to do a proper assessment and to see if study abroad plan is still feasible for you. The, the thing we don't want to happen is when you get to here, you find that you can no longer be financially supported. So 
discuss with your family, discuss, discuss with your financial uh, institution to see if that's still feasible. Uh, we do, um, there are different working opportunities available for students, but I, uh, that is only for gaining experiences and um, um, get to know the society, get to know the community culture, but it should not be counted as your source of uh, support, financial support for your study. So plan ahead so you won't get interrupted when things are not going well, when works are not available right away for you. Thank you, Zaping. Uh, just a reminder for everyone, again, um, I just got another message uh, asking me to request you all not to post any uh, inappropriate or vulgar comments in the chat section. I don't know why you're doing that. This is a university session. If you're not interested, you can, you're more than welcome to leave this session. Also, we have no tolerance for any racist comments, so we will block you as soon as we see anything like that. So this is not just a reminder, but a strict instruction for you to follow. Okay, our next question here um, is just a second. So our next question is, I wanted to know about uh, something. If you are shifting the current semester to the September, which is a uh, differing May intake to September intake, how are you going to handle all the students at once? That's a very good question. That's the thing that has been keeping us up all night long. How do we accommodate those students all at once? The institution is committed. We are building the capacities any way we can. Uh, the alternative delivery model may help us to be able to accommodate um, um, more students, but um, please be patient with us and, um, um, you know, up take actions as soon as possible. While the, the world is a, a stop operations in many ways, I want to suggest you to be ready. While you're uh, isolating inside of your house, have your visa documents ready, have uh, your transcripts ready. And when you re when everything's resumed to operate, you are the first one to, to be ready to move on to the next step. So meanwhile, communicate with us, let us know. The earlier you let us know your visa status, we can register early so you don't have to be struggled to get into a particular classes. So please work with us, but also be patient with us. The universe is committed to have the courses for you, have the capacities built, but uh, whoever asks that questions, um, I appreciate your vision. And uh, that is what is uh, challenging the institution to not to build a capacity, but not to compromise your educational experience. But um, be patient with us and have confidence in us. We are working out, uh, working to find the best possible solution. Thank you, Zipeng, uh, and I totally agree. Um, our next question here is for Ruben. So uh, Ruben, a student is asking that they had already applied for a visa for the summer semester. Uh, but since they have been deferred to fall, does that mean they need to change anything with the Canadian immigration or just use the visa they have? Like, what, what are they supposed to do next? Okay, that's another very good question. So when you, when students apply for their visas and their study permits, they get a letter of introduction uh, from the IRCC. And that is what they exchange for a study permit upon arrival in Canada. So as long as the dates on your... Um, as long as the expiry date on your introduction letter is past September, then you have nothing to worry about. You can travel to Canada and then we will help you to extend your study permit when you get here. Any visa, if applicable. Thank you. Thanks, Ruben. I think I am going to add a follow-up question on behalf of a student that actually inquired something with me yesterday. Okay. So, for example, if I am coming in, uh, I was supposed to be coming in for uh, May intake for the MBA program. And that lasts for two years. And the visa that I've received is until let's say January, 2022. But my program is scheduled to end in April, 2022. How does that work? What do I do about that? Not a very good question. So one of the services we offer to students is help with uh, extending study permits and visas, applying for work permits and such. Um, so majority of the workshops that we offer in the fall and the winter, it's twice a week. Those are dedicated to um, extending 
uh, documents that will expire. So as long as you can get here, we will take care of you and make sure that your permits are extended. Excellent. Thank you, Ruben. Um, our next question here is that my documents, such as my uh, A-level results, won't be ready by the August 1st deadline. What should I do? This was covered in the presentation. For whoever asked this question, you did not. I could, I could I answer that. Um, if you don't have your final A level results, any interim results, please uh, send to uh, our admission team. I apply at tru.ca. And the, the minute you receive your final results, send it to us as well. And I do want to remind the student quite often we will receive an email and say, here's my transcript. Please always include your TRU student ID and your full name. Uh, as, in that email so we know who you are and which which uh, student that documents belongs to. So please um, act and uh, and communicate like a university student, be thorough and be uh, keep accuracy. Excellent, thank you, Zipeng. Our next question is, um, I think this is from somebody that is already studying in Canada. So if you are already studying in Canada, having a valid study permit, do you still need to apply for a study permit or just a renewable? Students who are already in Canada do not need to apply for a new study permit. Um, study permit will have an expiry date. So um, just keep track of the expiry date and we can help you to extend when the time comes. Typically it's three months before the expiry date. Excellent, thank you. Our next question is, uh, do I still need to mail my transcripts or can I bring my sealed transcripts with me to TRU? The answer is, when you have your official transcript, send it through mail as soon as possible. That way we'll keep your file complete and that will make your registration process easier once you confirm your um, visa with us. So please send it, bring it to you as the last resort. We don't recommend if you have it, send it. Some, I know some of the career services not operating right now, but once it's open, please mail it to TRU International Admission Team. Thank you, Zipeng. Our next question is, should I book my accommodation prior to coming to TRU or is that something I can do upon arrival? Good question. The recommendation would be to book your accommodations as far in advance as possible. Um, and that's because uh, the spaces fill up very quickly. Um, it's better to apply now and then cancel later um, than wait until the last minute to apply. You'll have less options if you wait until the last minute. Thank you, Ruben. Our next question is, will TRU accept students that are arriving late for the fall semester? So for any reason, if they come in, let's say two weeks late, three weeks late, what is the latest they can come if they have to? Um, we will understand the challenges the student facing at certain times the visa comes late. Um, please do communicate with your international student advisors. Uh, theoretically, once the orientation started, um, we don't accept any late arrivals because orientation is your gateway to your very successful Canadian um, education experience. We don't want any student to miss the orientation. It's very comprehensive. It's mandatory for our student to participate in. So if you are going to miss the orientation, please uh, only arrive to TRE when you get such permission from your international student advisor. Excellent. Thank you, Zipping. And uh, once again, a reminder for everyone, if you do need to talk to your student services, uh, sorry, with your international student advisor, uh, Rayanne mentioned a link in her presentation. I will share this link with you uh, after this uh, presentation over an email. And that's where you can just click on that link. You will see a list of the ISAs. You can click on the name and you will actually be taken to their calendar where you can book an appointment with them. And that way you can have a one-on-one -on -one session. It will be online and you can have all your doubts clarified. And you don't have to go to a specific ISA. You can work with any of the ISAs. And uh, I know everybody has an ISA uh, assigned, but again, you can just book an appointment with any of the ISAs on that list. All right. And don't be shy. They will be uh, very happy to receive messages from you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, our next question here is, um, sorry. Um, if fall is being delivered online, 
does that mean the fees will be deferred or are we required to pay as usual? Um, the, the course delivery can come with different uh, mode. It could be through online, it could be through a, a very interactive educational platforms, but essentially they are regular course deliveries. So whatever tuition you paid, you once you start a course, you're st already enrolled in a particular semesters. And um, while the, in uh, the semester continues, uh, you will receive credits for your education as well. So consider everything fee-wise as usual. Uh, the only um, difference may be how the course has been delivered. But the instructors will be the same. The course outline will be the same. The evaluation, the learning outcome would all be the same. It's just a matter of how it's delivered. And we trust in modern technology will that make that experience uh, just as good as you're attending face to face. Thank you, Zipping. Um, our next question here is, why is there a difference of rates in applying for accommodation to TRE Ward or as to directly to the specific housing? So if I want to book uh, an accommodation at let's say East Village, if I book directly to East Village versus to TRE Ward, why is there a difference in rates? That's the question. Okay. It's not a very good question. So there are two ways of applying for accommodations. And yes, the first option is, you know, you go online and you apply directly to East Village, North Tower or McGill residents and you deal directly with them. And I think that is that is the preferred method. Uh, however, we also book a block of rooms from each of the residences and students can book one of these rooms. And uh, the method for that is you send all the fees to uh, the university and we do charge a $150 processing fee. And the reason for that is we are taking care of some of the formalities of the application process for you. Um, and the other reason as well is that uh, we typically save a batch of those rooms for students who will apply for their visas late. So um, there are benefits to both, um, but yes, the charge is $150 and it's just an accommodation processing fee. Thank you, Ruben. Um, our next question here is, do we need to confirm when we receive our study permits? Uh, yes. Oh. Yes. Ruben, go ahead. <laughs> Yes, we need to, when students confirm their study permits, that helps us to plan for their arrival and it helps us to plan for, you know, accommodation forecasting and just making sure that we have everything in place for every student who's going to come. So as soon as you get that study permit uh, approval, um, there's an email you will receive from the ISA team asking you to confirm your visa, please do that as soon as you get your study permit or visa confirmed. Thank you, Ruben. Um, the next question here is actually very interesting. So is TRU offering refunds for first time students who can no longer afford studying at TRU due to the COVID-19 situation? Um, we do understand um, this unprecedented uh, pandemic bring in so many hardships to students. Um, study abroad may not be a feasible plan. Um, at this moment, um, I just will be very um, concerned if students, because of a temporary disadvantage, will give up their study abroad plan. And I will be more than happy to help students to take a pause, maybe reassess their affordability to study abroad. Um, and we also wanted to keep the uh, integrity of the study permit. So technically, once the uh, final letter of acceptance is being issued to students, a student will go ahead and apply for a study permit. And once they apply for a study permit, they're obligated to study in Canada. So with many um, conditions tied to that study permit, our refund policy remains the same at this moment. But if any students are experiencing any challenges that they just cannot 
um, um, continue to study in Canada, please um, email, communicate with our um, admission team and uh, discuss your situation. Um, in a general term, the refund policy still be the same. We are accommodating deferrals, uh, adjusting study plans, um, but uh, once the final letter is issued, um, the refund policy stays the same. Thank you, Zipeng. Um, I see now we have a lot more questions and uh, a lot of them are very uh, specific to the COVID-19 situation. Um, so the next one here is, are there any effects on the postgraduate work permit uh, due to COVID-19? At this time, uh, IRCC has stated that they will be very flexible in assessing the postgraduate work permit uh, applications that have been impacted by the, uh, the change in uh, course delivery. So students who are in this situation will not be affected at all. Uh, and we will provide, here you, will provide letter of explanation to accompany the application. And for new student, if you're concerning about Canada may change their post-graduation work permit policy, um, we don't have any anticipation that will happen. Um, Canada's immigration plan is strategic and it's uh, countrywide and uh, Canada has um, um, heavy immigration plan for the future. So we do want to attract a uh, highly skilled worker, highly educated international student to remain in Canada. So we can hardly see that will change due to that temporary disrupt disruptions by COVID-19. So stay confident. Um, Canada do want to attract highly qualified, uh, highly skilled workers. So try your best and uh, the post-graduation work opportunities and immigration opportunities are very positive for um, future students. Thank you, Zipeng. Um, I'm gonna answer the next two questions very briefly. So the next question is, will the presentation and video be available for us to watch later? The answer is yes and yes. And I will also send you the link via email. Um, if you receive this, the my communication, uh, my, uh, my emails for invitation to this session, that means your email is correct on our list. If you have not received an email from us about this session, that's when you need to send your correct email and your student TID to welcome at tru.ca because that means your email is not on our list. Um, the next question here is, will you be able to help students who offer off-campus housing? And I'm gonna answer that as well. Uh, if you go to tru.ca slash housing, there is a tab called off-campus housing and you can click on that and there's lots of resources in that section. Um, and that's where you can really help yourself. There's lots of self-serve options because there's uh, lots of different uh, like accommodation options that you can choose from. And if you still have any questions, you can always talk to yourself. I'm going to move on to the next one. There's some extra. Sorry. Let's make that first. Maybe we're going to ask Ruben and Ruben their mic. And, and make only talking when they have to talk. Okay, so um, moving on to the next question here. Um, my country is in lockdown, um, like many other, and the banks are not open as regular. There will most likely be a delay in tuition fee payment, hence getting a, hence a delay in getting the LOA, and hence a delay in applying for visa. Will this affect my final offer letter? Will the tuition deposit payment be extended? Um, there are lots of questions involved in that. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, we will be given uh, payment deposit for incoming students. Uh, we do wanted to remind you that um, because of after your payment, there will be final letter will be issued and then you still need uh, sufficient time to apply for your study permit. So we will extend uh, your payment to whenever that becomes available for you. Um, but we do please keep in mind um, uh, the visa processing time. So uh, the delayed payment may lead to a deferral for your semesters if you cannot uh, get your study permit before the orientation, the fall orientation, which is towards to the end of uh, August. So keep that in mind. The To answer your question, yes, we can extend your 
um, um, payment um, tuition deposit, that's no problem. Uh, just be mindful about the timeline of the future uh, semester. And I also wanted to remind students that while you're isolating at home, and many of us are, um, please uh, do whatever you can to be prepared. So once that bank's open, you will be the first one to be ready to submit all the required documents to get that um, bank loan approval or that transfer done. And also pay my tuition will allow a lot of online transfer. So try that and maybe your uh, home institution are in compliance with that payment with an online transfer, you might not need to go to that bank to have that transfer done. So try experiment a different tools that you have to facilitate the process. Thank you, Zipping. Our next question here is, is it possible to defer my MBA journey at TRU after receiving the CLOA due to the current COVID-19 situation? Um, yes, the, feel free to contact igrad at tru.ca to uh, request a deferral. Uh, for MBA programs, uh, GDBA programs, we offer every semester. So September is the next intake, and then January, May uh, semesters that follow. So uh, it's very easy for an MBA student to defer. Thanks, Zipeng. Our next question is, how long should I expect to wait? Uh, to receive my LOA final letter of acceptance after making the tuition fee payment? Um, normally, I would say no more than two weeks after your tuition fee uh, cleared. Uh, if for, for whatever reason you didn't receive it, uh, please uh, contact um, great, um, admission team, I apply at tru.ca or uh, for master's program, please contact I grad at tru.ca to verify. I always suggest you to keep all the payment receipts, transaction confirmation pages that will give uh, easy reference to our admission team to locate the payments. And also uh, please uh, take advantage of the pay my tuition portal we, we introduced to make international tuition fee payment way easier these days and uh, way easy to track. Um, please take advantage of that. Absolutely. Thank you, Zipping. Our next question is for Ruben. Um, so Zipping, you can mute your mic and Ruben it would be great if you unmute. Um, so I heard that there are visa delays in my country. If I, if yes, I, I, I in time, time. Or, or, uh, there's, a, there's an echo from uh, somewhere. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, maybe Ruben, you want to finish my question? Okay. I thank you all for bearing with us during these technology challenges. We're all working from home, uh, just like your home, um, and we don't have access to the same technology we usually do in the office. Um, all right, so the next question is, I heard that there are visa delays in my country. If I don't get my visa in time, is it possible to come to Canada on my tourist visa? I'm assuming the student already has a tourist visa and apply for study permit when I'm in the country. So can that student come to Canada on their student visa and then apply for their study permit once they're in Canada? Um, very good question. Um, we are talking about the... Ruben, do you want to answer that question? Sure. Um, the, the experience we've had with students who come on a visitor visa and then try to change to a study permit has not been, uh, the success rate is not very good. Um, I'd say, you know, when you are applying for your study permit, uh, the visa officers in your country are experts in all the requirements that are needed to come to study in Canada. So sometimes it's taken when you come on a tourist visa and you try to change it to a study permit, they almost take it like you're trying to jump a step. So while some students have been successful, majority of applicants are not. It is always recommended that you apply for your study permit in your country of citizenship or your country of current residence. Thanks, Ruben. Our next question is, um, sorry, just a second here. So our next question is, is 
sorry, is TR you receiving mail as usual? I'm located in China and worried transcripts won't arrive in time. Bravo to that student. Uh, how did you get through the, the uh, firewall to watch this? But thank you for trying and um, welcome to TRU. Uh, yes, we do have staff dedicated to uh, the mail services. So uh, we are receiving those mail regularly, even though uh, uh, officers are working from home. No concerns on that. And we're looking forward to welcome you uh, to our campus. Thank you, Zipeng. Our next question is, in the presentation you mentioned that students who receive their study permit after March 18th cannot travel to Canada to study. So does that mean I have to apply for a study permit again? So maybe there's two part question in this. I think the first part is, let's say somebody has already applied for the study permit, but hasn't heard back from the consulate. In that case, what should they do? And let's say somebody already has a visa, but they got it after, sorry, yeah, a visa after March 18. Um, and they were going to come in the summer, what should they do? Okay. So uh, the first part of the question is, if you applied for your study permit and your visa and you got it um, after March 18th, uh, you're currently not able to come to Canada because of the current uh, situation with the COVID-19. Uh, but your study permit will still be valid for you to travel um, to Canada uh, at a future date. Like we mentioned earlier, just keep track of your uh, letter of introduction and make sure that the dates on it allow you to come to Canada. And the second part of the question, <laughs> do you want to repeat that for me again? So if somebody applied, but they, uh, let's say they applied and they got the visa, but it was after March 18th, what should they do? Uh, if you applied for your visa and it's after March 18th, um, if you haven't got it yet, then the, the process is still ongoing. Um, so just, you know, keep keep track of your application, keep checking in. But uh, as far as we know, there might be uh, reduced services and it might be taking longer to process these applications, but they are still being processed. Yes. And to add to that, we do receive confirmation from students on a daily basis. Uh, the visa is being issued, um, may not be directly from your country, but globally that has not been stopped. And for students, for example, if you received a, a, your study permit today, that's great. Uh, but because the temporary travel restriction, you cannot travel to Canada right away. Uh, so, but you can start it to plan your travel um, for arriving in for the fall semesters. And uh, the, be reminded when you book your air tickets, um, book fle flexible fares, just because there should still a little bit of uncertainty how uh, the travel restrictions being executed. If that's still extended to further, you need to be able to adjust your travel plan. Thank but you. we really hope, you know, we all exercise our own due diligence to not spreading the virus or not being involved in larger crowds. So um, we need to work together to stop the spread of the COVID-19. Thanks, Zipping. There's a question, question following to that, actually. So there's a student that's asking, uh, when we come to Canada, if we are required to self-isolate for 14 days, how will TRU assist with that process? Um, TRU is following the uh, federal and provincial health authorities' uh, suggestions. Um, we hope when all our students are coming um, at that time, uh, no self-isolation um, will be required. In case that requires, we will work out a plan to give student guidance on uh, what to do and when to arrive. But it's the, at this moment, it's a little too early for us to confirm that, but we will uh, keep you posted. I do want to remind the students, especially in this uh, situation and things are changing rapidly. So please follow your email, follow the communication we sent to you and read it carefully. Don't just glimpse it because there's lots of valuable information in that email. You don't want to miss anything that is important. Thank you, Zipeng. Um I'm just looking at all the questions coming up and some really interesting, important ones. So um, everyone, please pay attention and uh, stay uh, tuned because there are some really important questions coming up. But I do have one question here that I'm going to quickly ask. 
So how do I know who is my assigned ISA? <laughs> um, all students will receive a series of welcome letters throughout the summer, and those will be sent by their uh, international student advisor. At this time, if you wanted to connect with an international student advisor, please send an email to isa at tru.ca, and we will connect you with ISA who's overlooking your particular country or region. There are also web pages listed, uh, I say, and the countries they're looking after. So uh, do a little bit navigation online. We can also share the link with you um, on the follow-up email. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Our next question here is, um, are students still allowed to live in residences, or will TRU ask them to move out? Uh, I was planning on living in a student residence, but now I am worried. There seems to be a rumor going around that students are being asked to leave the on-campus accommodation? Ah, another good question. Um, we don't know where that rumor is coming from, but uh, we'd like to assure all students that the residences are all open and it's business as usual, other than the fact that students are being asked to practice uh, the social distancing and self-isolation, but there are no, there is no requirement for students to move out at this time. Thank you, Ruben. Um, just a quick update. So right now we are 20 minutes uh, away from ending this session. So if you do have any questions, please uh, pose them in the chat window uh, so that our moderators can bring those questions in our attention. Um, our next question here is, if situation in Canada is not good when I reach because of the COVID-19 situation, how will government provide support to international students? And there are two elements. One is the health side and the financial side. Uh, okay, I'll take a stab at this and then maybe the thing you can um, add in. The travel restrictions that are in place now will not be lifted until it's deemed safe for um, the Canadian public and for you, the students who are coming to Canada. So you should rest assured that at the time when you'll be allowed to come to Canada, everything will be, it'll be basically business, back to business as usual for the most part. Um, otherwise, the travel restrictions will not be lifted um, if the conditions are not safe for the general public and for you as well. Yeah, and I also want to mention um, anyone who's in Canada, um, whether you're a visitor, you're a student, you're a resident, you're a citizen, they, as long as you're in Canada, your health will be uh, properly taken care of by the government. If you're in sickness, uh, if you need hospitalization, those uh, systems are available to support everyone that is in Canada. Um, on the financial side, um, I do want to mention that your study to, in Canada is not Canadian government-sponsored activities. It's self, uh, student self-funded activities. So please make sure that you have proper financial plan to support your study. Um, in terms of um, emergency situation, the university might be able to help, but at large, the students are responsible for their own uh, financial um, stability and the continuity to support their study. Thank you, Zipping. Uh, the next question is actually quite relevant uh, for those that are also depending a little bit on their part-time jobs. So how is the job situation in Canada and in Kamloops right now? And will I be able to get a part-time job to help with my expenses? Uh, Ruben, you want to address that? Sure. So at this point in time, due to all the self-isolation and social physical distancing measures in place, a uh, majority of students are not... Uh, are not working unless they're in an essential um, service. Um, however, the general job market in Kamloops is fairly decent. Majority of students, you know, are able to get a, a part-time job usually within the first couple months um, of being in Kamloops. But, you know, the disclaimer here is that you need to be patient when you get here. Um, you need to focus on your studies first, you know, uh, in as much as there are students who are able to get a job in a month or two, 
there are students who will have to wait maybe a little bit longer, three or four months before they get a job. But by and large, there are jobs still available in Kamloops. Thank you, Ruben. So uh, just for everyone's information, uh, we also host something called as a pre-departure session. So uh, later in August, like maybe around mid-August, we will invite you to a live pre-departure session that will be very similar to this session here. And that will specifically focus on your journey in Canada because you will be starting your semester in 15 days. So at that time, we will definitely address a lot of your queries around, okay, what to do now? Now I am coming, I am definitely doing this. How do I start and you know those kind of things? So there will be, you can definitely ask a lot of your questions at that time as well. The next question is about IB diploma students. So this one is definitely very legit um, for a lot of students out there. If situation in Canada is not good when I reach the country, um, sorry, I read the wrong one. <laughs> the IB has canceled its exams, but uh, said they are going to give us the diploma based on the previous work. Does this affect the entry of the university in any way? Uh, the answer is most likely no. Um, the um, We will recognize what um, IB official transcript says on in terms of your grades, in terms of subject you are studied. Uh, we do recognize for certain things that you, the universe is uncertain whether you're qualified for a, a, an admission uh, for a particular program. Uh, there are testing services um, are available upon uh, your arrival and the university can um, arrange those testing to be done. But uh, whether you pass or not passing those exams, it um, won't be that significant because in terms of you pass it, that's great. If not, the university have uh, preparatory courses available for you to complete the, those courses um, at the university first and then move on to the program you're going to study. So. Uh, no concerns on that, but don't just uh, give up your study yet. Try, um, you, you're still in session and uh, try to achieve um, a very good um, uh, study progress as possible. That's a great answer. Thank you, Zipeng. Our next question is, I, paid, uh, I made a whole payment for the dorm accommodation, but the university took that payment as fees. How can we correct that? Uh, Ruben, you're mute. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, so we, we do get a lot of students who pay their accommodation fees together with their tuition fees. That is not a problem at all. Uh, when you receive your welcome letter from your ISA, one of the questions you'll be asked is whether you've paid accommodation fees to tier you. So at that point, you can notify your ISA and then we'll take care of it on this end. However, if you want that to be taken care of right now, please send an email to isa at tru.ca and uh, we'll, we'll look after it immediately. Excellent. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, I hope all our students from Kazakhstan are now in. Um, I just got a message from Tanya Boyka saying you couldn't log in and I shared the link again. I hope you guys are in. Welcome to the session. Sorry you guys missed a little bit um, uh, part of this, but I will share the link with you later by email. So you will have uh, this recorded video as well. Um, our next question here is, I read somewhere that international students and workers are not allowed to come to Canada. Is that true? And how do we know the updates from the Canadian government? At this point, uh, the travel restrictions bar anybody who had not received um, approval to, uh, prior to March 18th to come to Canada. Um, updates are being posted very regularly on the IRCC website. That is Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada website. Um, so please bookmark that website and uh, just follow the updates. They're very frequent. <laughs> Thanks, Ruben. Um, just again, uh, another reminder, we have uh, six questions that I get to be answered on my system. So, and we're gonna answer them and then we're gonna take a few more questions. So if you do wanna quickly post your questions in the chat window, that'll be great. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask the next question here. So just give me a second. One of the main aspects and attributes of TRU is 30 students per class. If you defer May intake to September, will this affect the class size? 
whoever's asked that question, I appreciate that. You have done your research. Well done. Um, TRU, uh, small class size is one of TRU's key strength that does give you the opportunity to have that one-on-one -on -one, um, individual attentions from your uh, classmates and instructors. So uh, moving forward, TRUs keep maintaining that relevantly uh, small class size. You will find in, in reality, some courses are uh, have more student than 30, some has less. So the 30 uh, per class um, is an average figure. So um, I don't see that will be significantly impacted by the COVID-19 or by a uh, expected larger intake for September because we are uh, building the capacity and do uh, based on the number of registrations we received the university can open new sessions and um, place more instructors to teach the courses uh, if the number of registration going beyond um, our plan. Thank you Zipping. Our next question here is what sorry before that one, since May and September, students will all be coming together. So this is uh, similar to the class size, this question, but Ruben, this one's more for you. Will we face a shortage of accommodation options, both on campus and off campus, uh, because Camus is a relatively smaller city? Very good question again. Um, at this point in time, we are monitoring all the accommodation options, um, especially off campus we know what we have on campus so uh, our task now is to complement that with the offerings off campus and uh, yes uh, you know we're gonna keep everybody updated as much as we can we'll post all the available options um, online uh, but again we encourage you to start looking early don't leave it to the last minute because um, we're not only looking after accommodation for international students, you're gonna be competing with domestic students as well for some of those accommodation options. Awesome, thank you, Ruben. Our next question is, what is pay my tuition? Can I trust to send my payments through there? And uh, how do I get the best rate possible? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Good question. Uh, pay my tuition is a official uh, international payment portal that TRU introduced um, in when uh, just early this year to um, allow international students to transfer their tuition through uh, different sort of channels, including credit card, bank transfer, um, and some other um, um, resources. So uh, it is a third party service provider and uh, Pay My Tuition does a promise that they will offer competitive rates uh, if you ever find that there is a lower rates on the market. If you provide uh, evidence showing that uh, is the valid quote you're getting, uh, Pay My Tuition will uh, they are waiting to match that rates to make sure that your transfer is um, as economic as possible. We do recommend students to use pay my tuition because that connect well with our registration and the student record system. So it's easy for a mission team to locate the um, payment and also uh, refund and all financial matters can be easily um, operated through that system. So we recommend that. We understand for certain countries, for whatever technical reason, you cannot use the pay my tuition. Um, it's not recommended, but uh, the traditional uh, bank transfer option still uh, available. You can transfer money directly through your local institution to uh, TRU um, official bank account. Excellent. Thank you, Zipeng. Uh, just a reminder uh, on two things uh, to everybody, because I do see there's lots of questions around admissions related. So if you have questions around how to submit your application, you can either contact your MSR, that's our marketing service representatives. Uh, uh, we have uh, our marketing services representatives are located in uh, India, Iran, Vietnam. We have two uh, representatives located in China. We have representatives located in Nigeria, in Kenya. 
uh, in Colombia, as well as uh, our representative that is located in the CIS region who supports all our students in Russia, uh, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, uh, and the, the rest of the region as well. Uh, if uh, you still need assistance, you can always send an email to welcome at tru.ca. So this is for students who are yet to submit their application. For those who have already submitted their application and have a query about your application, you can send an email to iapply at tru.ca for undergraduate inquiries and post baccalaureate diplomas as well. And if you have an inquiry for your master's degree program, you can send an email at igrad at tru.ca. Uh, you always mention your TID. That makes it very easy for the person on the other side to be able to track you in our system and make sure we have all the information up front instead of back and forth on, okay, what's your name? What's your date of birth? So send your TID, make sure you always do that. The other thing is um, those who are still waiting for their uh, deferred LOA, which means those who were already admitted for summer but are waiting for a deferred letter as well as like the final letter of acceptance for the fall semester, please be patient with us. We are catching up on uh, the volume of uh, admission letters to be deferred. So we are working on that as well. You will receive it um, very soon. It, like within the next 15 days maximum, you should all have received your deferred uh, LOAs. So that should not be a challenge. Uh, but just please be patient a little bit right now. We have all transitioned last week from working on campus to working from home. And I actually have a question um, with uh, around that. Uh, so I, I don't know who's gonna take that question. It's up to you guys. But what are the steps that TRU is taking to stop the spread of the virus on campus? Is the campus closed? What about residence life? All right, I'll take a stab at that one. Um, on campus right now, all students in residence are being required to practice the social distancing. So everybody is asked to stay in their suites unless it's absolutely necessary that they leave. You know, so if you're going grocery shopping, then yes, you can. The few who are working in the essential service sector, they can leave as well. But, you know, otherwise, Everybody's being asked to buy groceries enough for two weeks and just hang tight in their rooms. And, you know, as for staff, majority of staff are working from home. So, you know, we're delivering this uh, webinar from, you know, from our homes. And uh, this is going to be the new norm uh, until things are a little bit safer. So um, yes, if you're on campus, and even if you're on off campus, students who are off campus are being asked to stay at home. So everybody is home. Social distancing, physical distancing is being practiced by everybody. That's the only way we can get rid of the COVID-19 um, crisis. And if I can add uh, for students, wherever you are, I think COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic has spread to probably over 200 countries and regions at this moment. So it doesn't matter where you are, there is a chance uh, that the COVID-19 is spread in your neighborhood. So it doesn't matter if you're young, you're healthy, it's not, you don't want to become a transmitter of that virus. And uh, you might be have to stay at home for longer. And but remember, you're not stuck at home. You're safe at home. And uh, please take uh, exercise uh, your um, self um, isolation and quarantines, and wash your hands as quick as often as possible to make sure you're not a transmitter of that um, uh, virus. And uh, protect the community and protect um your family and friends and everyone there is no social uh events should happening at this moment and uh we wanted you to be safe and that's number one priority you can have all the entertainment you want once the COVID 19 is gone but not right now thank you zipping and ruben uh last few questions here so in the worst case scenario because of this pandemic if we are not able to come to canada by fall 2020 and we choose to have our tuition fees refunded, is that possible? Um, you can connect it um, with our admission teams, but keep in mind the institutions are responsible for the integrity of our letter. Some students, um, your uh, priority and your obligation is to in compliance with that study permit that is given to you. So at this moment, our refund policy remains the same. If you receive a rejection letter from the IRCC, 
And by the way, um, we don't have any reason to believe that COVID-19 will affect visa approval rates. Um, so um, unless you're re rejected by the visa officer, um, the refund policy still stays the same. We will, on a compassionate um, uh, ground, uh, will consider some of the cases, but um, um, we, do, we don't want this temporary COVID-19 disruptions will affect your long-term a steady plan is the plan that you always dreamed of and don't let it discourage you because of the temporary um, uh, disrupt disruptions by the virus. Excellent. Thank you. I'm now going to do a countdown of questions. We have last five questions left. So question five of five. Um, can an international student get an education loan in Canada? International, oh sorry, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> International students are not eligible for the government student loans. Um, and as far as I know, international students are not eligible for uh, bank loans at this time as well. Thank you. Our next question here is, this is question four of five, going reverse countdown. I have not been able to write my IELTS, what should I do? Um, depending on the programs uh, that you're applying, we have already answered uh, that question earlier. For some programs, for example, master's or some selective programs, IELTS is a critical um, element to evaluate your qualification of that program. So for those ones, we will still uh, require an um, IELTS um, results to evaluate your application. But for other programs like um, open programs, bachelor's, uh, BBAs, those programs, um, BAs, Bachelor of Science, we could still offer your letter without an IELTS. But I do want to suggest students to not giving up the uh, uh, language proficiency test opportunities uh, once that become available, because that will give you a good indication how you're placed into uh, the, um, that proof your English proficiency, and that will really determine whether you will start a TRU with your ESL study or academic course study. So um, watch for those dates, and once it's um, available, please do register for your IELTS exam. We are, as an institution, uh, also offer a on-arrival English placement test. So uh, by any chance you would not be able to write that IELTS, you can always come to TRU and take the English placement test on campus. Uh, we are also looking into some alternative um, testing methods, and uh, we have been in contact with our uh, English education department and admission office to determine whether we could introduce some other testing services. Um, once that become available, um, we'll let you know. Um, hopefully those services will allow you to write a language proficiency exam uh, during the COVID-19 lockdown in your home uh, with a secured environment. Um, we're exploring those opportunities. We will keep you updated in the next couple of weeks to see whether additional um, um, language test services will be available. Okay. Thank you, Zipping. Can I change my course once I'm there or should I change that prior to arriving to TRU? Yes, you can change your courses based on the course availability and uh, based on the time of your request. Um, I, If your visa is being already processed, um, I think I would suggest you consider the program change after you received your study permit because uh, changing in between will cause confusions for visa office to make that decision. Thank you. Um, my next question here is, can I change my course once I am there or should I do that prior to arriving to TRU? That's the question we just answered. Did it? Oh, sorry. There's a repetition here. Okay. Um, there's a previous question that I, I skipped, I guess. Uh, I'm going to quickly answer the, ask that one. I am a scholarship recipient. Uh, should I be worried that my scholarship will be canceled? If your scholarship has been given, granted by TRU, uh, that's still valid, we'll still honor that. It will be used as a tuition credit against um, uh, your student tuition account. Excellent, thank you. Um, 
Last question here, can the pay my tuition app be used to pay other payments such as general fees, insurance, uh, activity cost, etc.? Pay my tuition can be used as a official payment channel. Anything you would like to pay TRU, you can pay through pay my tuition and make sure you keep all your transition record for us to re relocate it um, um, if needed. Uh, yes, you can pay all TRU fees through pay my tuition. Thank you, Zipeng. I definitely suggest everybody to try to do that as soon as you can, so that you have your letter of acceptance and as soon as the bank opens, you go, um, sorry, you have your letter of acceptance and as soon as this situation comes to an end, you apply for your visa right away. So you don't waste time for the bank to open, you do the process. Um, of course, uh, if you need any assistance with pay my tuition, you can always contact us as well. Uh, we uh, do have a website for that and I do believe my colleague did post that in the chat window as well. I will also include that in the email. Um, there is one more question that just came up and uh, that is, is it possible to change my master application? So let's say somebody has just applied, they haven't gotten their CLOA, but now they've decided, no, I'm just going to go in January instead. Is it possible to defer an application, not a, not an offer? Yeah. Yes, you can just send a follow-up email to igrad at tru.ca, say, give your name, give your student ID and uh, tell them you are going to change to the next intake. Awesome, thank you. Um, the last one here is, it's not a question, but just wanted to say thank you, TRU, for taking the time uh, to do this. Uh, cheers. Thank you very much, whoever said that. We appreciate this. Uh, and we're It's our pleasure. Yeah. And uh, we hope uh, that big crowd, um, we can come up together as a good energy and to get rid of COVID-19. And the way as a team uh, on campus, the faculty, the service providers, the housing staff, we are all ready to welcome you in coming fall. Hopefully by then things will go back to normal. Mm -hmm. um, if your questions were not answered, if you felt that we had we couldn't address your question through the presentation or the Q&A, feel free to reach out to us. We are still uh, available around here to help you, to support you. You have your marketing services representative uh, and you can definitely uh, support uh, ask for their support. You can also reach out directly to uh, the admissions office or you can send us an email at welcome at tre.ca and we will be happy to answer your questions. Um, I see a question in capitals, and I think I'm just going to put it out there. What if a second wave of coronavirus comes again? Because scientists say it would be a seasonal flu. This wave would come again. <laughs> what do we do? I'm laughing, sorry, because it's in capitals. That's the only reason. I, that question is um, really legitimate. Yeah, Zipping, I'll let you take that. That is a valid question that came to our mind. Um, this is, again, unprecedented. Um, um, pandemic, it never happened. No country, uh, no government in the world are prepared for this. So it's very important for us to be a responsible citizen, to practice. The best thing you can do is so simple is to stay home and not going anywhere unless it's absolutely necessary. Stop socializing with your friends uh, in person. You can reach out them through uh, your mobile devices, uh, meeting them remotely, and have your hands cleaned. Again, very basic. If we all exercise that, there shouldn't be in a second waves coming. And uh, there are uh, scientific researches being in place. You know, the the vaccines being tried, to, uh, being researched, being um, um, developed and being tested. So let's be confident this would not affect uh, our future, but it's very important for us to exercise um, that social isolation, that physical distance. If we all do that, we all stay at our home, it will stop. And look at what happens in China, that's already happening. So we just need the rest of the world, we need to do the same and be responsible to your community and the society. Yes. Um, I think this is going to be the end of our session. Uh, Jagjit Kaur, I saw your message again. That's another one in caps. Please reach out to Ranjit Shastri. Uh, I'm sure you have his contact information. Um, 
please get in touch with us for any of your questions. We will be happy to answer them. Um, we do have to bring this session to an end, given the fact that uh, it is already over an hour and 50 minutes. But if you have any questions, we will be happy to answer them after. Um, I want to end this with on a positive note by letting you all know, first of all, follow us on Instagram, Thierry Ward. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we're also on WeChat. Uh, we are everywhere. So follow us, stay in touch with us, and uh, stay safe, be careful. And uh, uh, I, any last words from Ruben and Zipping? Um, I'm staring at a screen. I saw three windows and this, um, you know, three very handsome gentlemen. And I want to uh, call out to the students. We are all TRU graduates and uh, we're all TRU international graduates. So we are here to advocate for you, but we are also take you uh, um, call upon your accountability and professionalism in this process. And uh, that's stay together, that's exercise our responsibilities and uh, we will get over this and we cannot wait to welcome you to arrive on our campus in September. It will be absolutely beautiful. Thank you everybody for joining us uh, today. Uh, this is uh, the world is going through some very unprecedented times and uh, you know I'm a glass half full kind of guy so I'm uh, I'm looking forward to welcome you all in uh, in August. Stay safe and uh, take care and start your applications as soon as you get that final letter of acceptance. Thank you. Good job, guys. Have a virtual high. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Good job, students. The world needs you. World needs to create. You. To question. To create. To care. Question. At to Thompson care. Rivers University, choose your path, and we'll help you get there every step of the way. On campus or online. Shape the world you want to see and find your true.